Hi friends, I'm Chris from PhaseDoc. Welcome back for the third part in our five-part series on industrial automation with an Arduino. Links to the entire series are in the description below. In the first two videos, we talked about how line benders work, why we might want to automate them, and the components we could use to develop control to do just that. How about we build one right now? I'm going to attempt to do something never before seen on YouTube. I'm going to build an effective Arduino-based automation control out of readily available, low-cost components right before your very eyes, in real time, less than four minutes. Watch closely. The hands never leave the arms. Ready? Go. Wait, wait, not so fast. Yes, I'm going to build it, but first a word of explanation. I'm going to assemble this project on one of our company's workbench project development kits or PDKs. They're perfect for accelerating and protecting projects like this with Arduinos or Raspberry Pis, really any small electronic components. So let's take a moment to take a look at that and then we'll get started, okay? Thanks. You'll see me use a workbench base like this to hold all the electronic components in place to optimize the wiring. We mounted all the components and adapters we call clicks. These snap into the base quickly and easily, and they don't release until you tell them to. For Pis and Arduinos, we use a dedicated adapter called a slide. Other components are just mounted directly to the click with self-tapping screws. It's fast and very versatile. The entire product line is available now on our website at phasedoc.com. Come check us out if you like what you see here. Let's begin with the heart of our project. We got the Arduino Mega installed here at the bottom of this stack. It's been screwed securely onto one of our clicks. You can see up on top we've got the LCD keypad shield installed. That's not hard to do at all. Just make sure to align the pins properly. I like to use the A0 pin. That seems to make a good reference point. And in between, you see the green screw terminal shield that I mentioned before. That'll come in handy very soon. So we're going to snap that guy in here, I think. That'll make a good starting point. Go on to our next part, which is the relay module that I mentioned. You can see the various components on there. You've got the optical coupler. You've got the LED indicators. And then over here, you have the control pins. I've gone ahead and wired pigtails onto the relay that we're going to use. The only thing to note there is it's got normally open and normally closed terminals. Make sure to use the normally closed terminal for this one. So we're going to snap that guy in just to the right and above the Arduino. And what we're going to do now is wire them together. We only need three wires for this project. We need 5 volt power, which is at the top of the rightmost set of pins on the Arduino and at the close end of the relay pins. We're also going to connect ground, which is at the bottom of the Arduino and at the far side of our relay module. We're only using one relay here, the rightmost one, which is the rightmost control pin. I'm going to connect that in, and I have programmed it to use pin 31, so we'll connect that there. And that should be all there is to it. This is where our handy dandy screw terminal comes in. I've mounted that on a 1x3 click. It's ready to go. We're going to snap it in beneath the relay module, and we're going to wire those up with a Phillips screwdriver. Tighten that down. And attach this one. And we will be ready to connect our load wires to that when we're ready to go. So that's in place. Remember that we wanted audio alerts, so let's get our speaker installed. I've gone ahead and mounted that to a small click, and we're going to snap it in just above the Arduino so that we can get those wires attached to the screw terminal shield. I'm going to set that up on end. 
We only need two wires for that. Ground is the second to the last wire on the Arduino. Right there. And D3 is the best wire to use on the Arduino for sound. And we can see now we're wired in there and ready to go. Last but not least, how about some power? I've mounted a battery to a click, zip tied it right on there. Let's set it down. And we're going to connect that via USB cable. And we are almost ready to smoke test. In fact, we are. Let's fire it up. When we push the battery start button, we expect the LCD to light up immediately followed by a startup fanfare from the speaker to let us know that it's connected and the program is booting properly. Then the Arduino will go into wait mode until we give it further instructions, which we cover in our next video. There you have it, ready to rock.